Hey everybody and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And this video is going to be talking about the template editor and specifically how to make columns with the template editor. So what do I mean by columns? Um, this came up recently with a customer who wanted to have this or a similar building um, on a GA drawing in a 3D view. And they wanted sort of a BOM of all of the assemblies on the drawing. And as you can imagine, uh, when you have a building of any decent size, it's going to be a pretty long list. Um, so there was a template, and this is sort of a basic version of that template. You can see it's pretty, pretty simple. There's a header, and then there's a repeating assembly row. Uh, if I go ahead and open up the drawing in question that I was testing with, you can already see as it's loading there on the side that um, we have an issue with that BOM. With all of the assemblies listed, it sort of runs down, runs right off the page, and then keeps going and runs down and down and down and down, and that obviously... That's not going to work when we got to try to go ahead and print that. Um, so to understand what I'm talking about, what, what we want is for this to come down to the bottom of the page, stop, and then pick up again and keep going, and then pick up again if needed and keep going. So you want to have it stacking in columns that actually stay on the sheet. So we're going to take a look at how we can do that with that template. Um, so if I go into the template and I double click in the background, first we can see there's an output width and an output height. So the width here is going to be essentially what we see, roughly how wide is the template. And then the output height is how far should I go down before I start again. Now with a report, you would do this for a page height, you know, for an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper or something like that. In this case, it's running almost 2 foot 1 inches. And here, the border is actually, you know, the drawing is 2 feet tall. It's, it's not going to be 24 inches. It's more like 23 inches to the, to the blue border. And then, um, so that's why it's running down a little bit. And then it, because there's too much data, it starts again. And it starts again, almost like you would see a sheet of paper starting again, starting again, starting again, okay? So that's not what we want here, but that's what's happening. So if I were to go in here, um, the first thing that I want to address is where that height is. So two foot O, oh, two foot one is a little bit too much. So let's change that down to like one foot 10, something like that. Let's, let's just sort of see how that changes. We're going to see where it breaks, right? So I'm going to refresh the template and you can see now that it comes down and then it, it breaks a little bit shy of the border and then restarts, you know, so it's still restart and we haven't addressed that issue yet, but I'm simply saying how far should it go down before it ends? We could probably go a little bit further if I went in here and made this, uh, you know, one foot ten and a half, say okay, and save, and then we'll come over here and refresh again. There we go, so it's coming a little bit closer, okay? So that, that's probably good. That's about where I would want it to come down before I want it to start again. So if I go back into the template, the first thing we have to do when setting up columns is set up the width, right? So if I double click again, you can see there's that output width of five inches. Well, if I wanted to have two columns, I'm gonna need more like 10 inches. And depending on how much of a gap is between them, uh, I may wanna have a little bit more than that. And if I wanted to have three columns, I'd need like 15 or 16 inches. And if I wanted four, uh, four columns, I would need like 20, 21, 22 inches, okay? So, so the width needs to be enough for as many columns as you think you need, as you want to build this for, okay? So let's say we wanted to build it for two columns, okay? I'll come in here and I'll say, let's make the output width 10. And I'll go a little bit extra because there's going to be a slight gap between them. We'll do 10 and a half inches and I'll say, okay. And you can see that the, the width now has changed. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to double click on the page header and say use columns. I'm going to check that box and hit OK. And then I'm going to go to the actual output row and double click and do the same thing. Use columns, but here I have an edit button. And if I click on the edit button, you can see a minimum count and a maximum count. And then there's a spacing, where to start, the fill direction, and the fill policy. So let's say we wanted to do a maximum of two columns here. We'll say OK, OK, we'll save this, and then we'll go ahead and refresh the template. So now you can see we've got two columns. Now obviously two columns is not going to be enough here, but you can see that we've got two columns and then repeating two columns off the sheet. And if I zoom in, now the header, if I had not checked, you know, I don't have an edit setting here, but if I had unchecked that option, what would happen is the header would only print once, and then it would not repeat on any other columns across the sheet. 
Um, so that's why we want to have that checked. Okay, so let me go ahead and in there again and make sure that's checked. Um, the, the other thing that I'm noticing about this, and I'll try to scoot this stuff over here so we can see this a little bit better. So if you notice, and the piece marking on this job is not up to date right now, but you can see it goes CB1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and then D, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, which is obviously, you know, not what we want. We wanted to go down and then start again, not left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So that's going to be the option for our fill direction. We want this to fill vertically, not horizontally. So, uh, horizontally, listen to me, horizontally. So I'll say, okay, okay, I'm inventing words here. And then we'll go ahead and refresh this template again. So now it's going one, two, three, four, and then D, one, two, three, four, DJ, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now it's actually going in the order that we want it to go. But two columns is still not enough. So for this sheet, let's go back to that template. Uh, for this sheet, we're probably going to need more like four, right? So let's go in here and four would be, uh, let's say 21. Again, I have a little bit of a space, a gap between them, and it'll yell at me if, if 21 inches isn't enough. But let's just try that. We'll say OK here. We'll double click on that row and we'll say let's use a maximum of four columns. Let's see if that works. It looks like it did. OK, so let's save this and then we'll refresh. So now we can see we are getting four columns of information. Again, starting at CB1, 2, 3, and then alphabetically going down and down and down, okay? Now, the last thing really that I wanna point out here is I had said that the output height should be the full height of the sheet. And we can see it's no longer doing that, or it's at least it's not doing that. So why is that? Um, that's because of the last option here under the columns. The fill policy even is essentially trying to keep the column heights even across the board. And maybe you'd like that for appearance sake, and that's fine, but that's, that's what's controlling that. But if I go in here and I change that to continuous, it's actually going to revert back to using the output height that we have here. So if I save this and we go ahead and refresh, you can see now it's going and filling up down to the full height, filling up down to the full height, full height, and then whatever the remainder here is ending on the last column. So obviously it's, it's not that tough to set one of these things up. You just have to know those couple of basic items. So that's going to be setting the maximum output width that you want for the number of columns based on you know, how wide this is. And then you want to make sure you go into all of the rows. Now, this is a very simple template, but if you had multiple rows, you know, assembly rows, then part rows and bolt rows, you'd need to do this for all of them. You would check on the use columns option, come in here, set up your minimum and maximum counts, spacings, your fill direction, and then your fill policy, depending on what it is you're trying to do. So it's a pretty quick video, um, you know, just kind of covering some basics. I hope this helps you guys out for anybody who ever needs to have this sort of stacking or repeating uh, list of, of data because it's running down off the page. You know, it does happen. Um, if you have any questions or any thoughts, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching.